If you're considering buying a TIG welder or just purchase one, you may not be familiar with all the features and advantages of a machine like this digital TIG from Eastwood. These options include 2T and 4T modes, pulse, AC frequency control, a spot weld timer, and the ability to program presets to make setup quicker and easier. This machine really makes them easy to program and understand because you can see the settings as a chart rather than a bunch of individual knobs. Let's take a look at these features and show you how easy they are to use and why you may want them for your welding applications. We'll start with 2T and 4T modes. For the best control, you'll typically want to use the foot pedal to control the amperage, but there are cases where you'll want to use the trigger on the torch. Remember, the foot pedal allows you to control the amperage as you weld, where the torch trigger is basically an on and off switch. When using the torch, you have two options, 2T and 4T modes. The T stands for touches. 2T is two touches, which is standard torch control. When you press the trigger, the machine goes to the amperage you've selected and you're able to weld until you release the trigger. In both modes, you'll set the pre and post flow as you always do when TIG welding. Pre-flow allows the shielding gas to flow for a period of time to shield the weld area before the arc is started. The post flow feature keeps the gas flowing after the arc is stopped to keep the weld protected until it cools. This digital TIG also has a ramp up and ramp down function with 2T. That means you can preset the time it takes for the machine to ramp up to the preset amperage so you don't get it all at once, which helps prevent blow through and thin metal. When you're finished welding, release the trigger and the arc will start to ramp down and terminate. In 4T mode, there are four touches. Press the trigger and the machine will start an arc at the predetermined start amperage. You then release the trigger and the machine will slope up to the set working amperage, at which time you will be welding. Press the trigger again and the amperage will slope down to the ending amperage, then terminate when the trigger is released. The advantage of 4T is that you can preheat the material with the starting amperage, then ramp up to your working amperage and weld. 4T also enables you to keep the arc running as long as you would like after the ramp down or terminate the arc as quickly as deemed necessary with the release of the trigger. As you can see, 2T and 4T gives you the ability to upslope and downslope the amperage, which helps to prevent blow through, especially when welding sheet metal or exhaust. Remember, Many people prefer the precision control of the foot pedal, but there are cases where you won't be able to use the foot pedal or you just prefer using the torch trigger and you'll be glad you have both 2T and 4T modes. Now let's take a look at the pulse settings. This digital TIG has both AC and DC pulse settings. Remember, DC is for welding steel and AC is for welding aluminum. This feature allows you to control the arc's amperage by fluctuating the amperage up and down. With this machine, you're able to control the minimum and maximum amperage of the pulse, along with how frequently and how long the pulse takes place. If you watch someone TIG weld and they're repeatedly moving the pedal up and down at a steady pace, they're basically doing their own pulse within an amperage range. You can set up this machine to do this for you automatically with exact precision. This is useful when you're welding thin material when you want to minimize distortion, prevent blow through, or focus an arc on the edge of a piece of metal. The pulse frequency is how often it pulses to a preset amperage. You then control how long it maintains that amperage before dropping back down and repeating the cycle. But you can still use the foot pedal to control the amperage, which is nice when you need less heat, like if you're getting near the end of the piece of metal. The pulse frequency is how often it pulses to a preset amperage. You then control how long it maintains that amperage before dropping back down and then repeating the cycle. But you can still use the foot pedal to control the amperage, which is nice when you need less heat, like if you're getting near the end of the piece of metal you're welding and it's getting hot. So you can let off the pedal to lower the amperage, which will lower both the max and minimum amperage at the same rate. Let's show you how to set the pulse in both DC and AC modes. To set DC pulse for welding steel, select DC TIG. Then select your other parameters. Select lift start or high frequency. Select local or remote which is torch or foot pedal control, and we'll choose local to use the torch. Now set the pre-flow starting amperage, which we'll set to 50, and the upslope time, which we'll set to zero. Now set the peak amperage and pulse percentage, which is what the pulse feature will control. We'll set the peak to 100 amps, so when we release the trigger, it will automatically go from 50 amps to 100 because our upslope time was set to zero. Now set the pulse percentage of the peak, which we'll set to 20%. We 
which means the bottom of the pulse will be 20% of the peak. Then set down slope to zero, end amperage, and finally post flow to five seconds, which only occurs when you finally release the trigger or let off the foot pedal. With DC pulse, you'll now set the pulse frequency and pulse ratio. The pulse frequency is how often per second this pattern happens. So if you set it to one, this pattern will occur one time per second. Pulse ratio is the ratio of the peak amperage to the minimum amperage. So if you set it at 80%, it will be at the peak 80% of the time and the lower amperage 20%, or eight tenths of a second on peak, then two tenths of a second on the lower amperage, and then it will repeat the cycle. To set the AC pulse for welding aluminum, select AC TIG, then select all of your other parameters like you did for DC TIG welding. In AC mode, you'll also have the ability to set AC frequency and AC balance. Basically, this is going to allow you to control the arc shape, penetration, and cleaning. Higher frequency means a tighter weld bead, and lower frequency means a wider weld bead. You'll get good penetration whether it's set high or low, as long as you're using the proper amperage. By increasing the frequency, the current changes direction more often, which gives the arc cone less time to expand. This means that the arc is more focused at the precise spot the electrode is pointing. This is ideal when precise penetration is required because it allows you to weld very tight joints with good penetration without laying down too much filler material. Use high frequency in an inside corner joint or fillet weld so you can maintain a good weld bead in the corner. If the pieces you're welding have wider gaps or require more material to build up the weld, you'll want a larger arc cone, so you'll use a lower frequency. An outside corner joint would be an example of when you may want to use a lower frequency. The digital TIG also has mixed pulse. In many cases, while welding aluminum with low amperages, the arc can be difficult to stabilize, so this machine has a DC pulse while welding to do just that, stabilize your arc. To set your machine to mix pulse, set your machine to AC, then mix. Then pick your parameters for AC pulse welding, as we talked about earlier. Instead of your current dropping to a lower AC amperage, like it normally would, it will now drop to a set DC amperage for the arc stabilization you need. Now let's move on to the spot weld timer. Spot weld timer is great for spot welds, plug welds, or for running short beads and can be programmed from zero to five seconds. First, select the spot weld option. When it's selected, the machine will automatically be set to high frequency and 2T. Now set the pre-flow time. Then program the amount of time you want to weld. We're selecting three seconds. Then set the amperage you want to weld, which is 80 amps for this material. Then select the post-flow time. Now you're ready to start spot welding, making the same quality welds every time with the Eastwood Digital TIG. Simply pull the trigger and the machine will weld for the program time before stopping. Pull the trigger again to repeat. Now let's check out the programming option of this machine. This welder also comes with the ability to program up to 15 settings to make welding setup quicker and easier. It even comes with five settings pre-programmed for many standard materials, which is great to get you started. To add a preset, simply program the settings for the material welding and select loading. Then select the number of the preset you want to use. We're calling this one P8. Press the knob and now your settings are saved, making it quick and easy to start welding the next time you're working with that material. To retrieve a preset, simply press recall and dial through the presets until you find the one you need for the material you're welding and then press the main control knob. As you can see, the Eastwood TIG 200 Digital has all the features you not only want but need in a quality machine plus a rocker style foot pedal and WP17 flex head torch, as well as the ability to weld steel and aluminum up to one quarter of an inch. And don't forget the Eastwood three year warranty and money back guarantee. And Eastwood has a bunch of videos on YouTube that teach beginners, as well as videos that show advanced techniques, making learning the TIG weld easier than ever. For more information or to get your welder today, click the button to visit eastwood.com.